We're back and I've got this to show you. It's the lower spec option of the Lenovo Chromebook Plus 14. I picked it up over the Black Friday period last year for what I believe was a bit of a bargain. I'll tell you how much I paid later on in the video. I've already unboxed and reviewed the higher spec option of this model on the channel. I'll link you to those videos at the end of this one. But in this video, I want to take you through the four main differences to be aware of between the two model options. I'll also cover the one extra advantage the lower spec may offer over its superior sibling. So let's take a look. First up, you do lose the touch display. For some of you, I know this will be a massive deal. For others who enjoy a clean, fingerprint-free display, you may even see it as a benefit. I've tried out some workarounds like mapping keys to areas of the screens for games using the Chrome OS game dashboard. It's passable, it may be enough for some, but of course it doesn't beat the experience of using the touch display. The aesthetic knock-on from the display not being touch is that it now sits recessed. With the plastic bezel on show, it doesn't look quite as premium as the touch display model that has its flat glass front. Keep in mind though the differences like this stand out more to me as I've lived with both devices. That said, for me the touch option isn't even the best thing about the display, it's the fact that it's OLED and nice and bright at 400 nits, and this lower spec option still delivers on both of those points. So for the second difference you're getting half the storage at 128 gig rather than 256 gig, and it's also slower. So the 128 gig in this one is universal Universal flash storage 3.1, whereas the higher spec has UFS 4.0. It's a shame, but storage is another obvious spot for Lenovo to save some of the cost to offer this model at the lower price. UFS 3.1 is significantly slower than 4.0. I'd probably really need the two models side by side, but I expect copying large files to the Chromebook and perhaps installing large apps, likely games, may show up some difference in the time taken. But that certainly doesn't mean this lower spec option is slow in any sense and I'd expect for general browsing your struggle to tell a difference. The third difference I wanted to mention is the lower amount of RAM in this model, yet at 12 gig of low power DDR5 RAM, I'm willing to bet that it's still more than most Chromebook Plus out there, because put simply, it is, as most Chromebook Plus still come with 8 gig. However, the fact is the higher spec model does have an extra 4 gig, giving a total of 16. These last two differences of the storage and RAM really come down to the impact on performance. Did I find myself thinking this version of the Lenovo Chromebook Plus was noticeably slower than the high spec model I spent time with? Generally, no. As for most use, the storage and the RAM are ample. It's really the processor, the MediaTek Companio Ultra 910, that's the critical ingredient. In fact, I ran Geekbench 6 and Speedometer 3.1, on this lower spec version, and based on the usual variation you can expect to see when running these tools, it didn't really look like there was anything in it. For the fourth difference, there's no fingerprint reader on the keyboard deck of this lower spec model. It's actually a little more confusing here, as there are some non-touch 128 gig of storage with 12 gig of RAM options that do come with the fingerprint reader, so it's one to watch for. I'll link you in the top right now to a video that can let you check the exact spec of any Lenovo you're looking at. A fingerprint reader is a really nice touch, no pun, and it can help a laptop type device feel more modern and more phone-like in its use, as well as giving an extra level of security when you're unlocking it in public without the need to type in your password or PIN. Again, for me, especially related to the price, I was okay in giving this up. Before we get to that price and the one key benefit this lower spec model may have over the higher spec, if you think more people need to know about these differences in the model options, please do like, subscribe or drop a comment below. Why not tell me and others which difference between the two model options is the biggest deal breaker for you? Engaging with the video in any of these ways can really help it reach a wider audience, so thanks in advance. So I paid just £358 for this lower spec model, brand new from John Lewis in the UK. They had an excellent price to start with that I shared on socials at the time, and to bring that down further I combined my £5 My John Lewis reward discount and paid using discounted gift cards. The real bonus comes through when I get to take off a further £100, as my claim for £100 cashback from Google has been approved and is due to be paid out to me this month. Once that does, for under £260, that's about US dollars I think this model option was an absolute bargain. If I'd applied all the discounts and that extra cash back to the higher spec model at the same time, I'd have been looking at needing an extra £200, and when that's over 75% of the total I spent for this model, it becomes harder for me personally to justify that, to gain that extra spec. 
That said, most of the time there's a £100 gap between the lower spec and higher spec models, and if you can't afford to wait for a deal to come up on the lower spec that makes it worthwhile for you, I'd say it's a no-brainer just to pay that bit extra and go for the higher spec. But let me know what you think in the comments. As I've recently shared, as we start 2026, we're also seeing new lows on the price of the higher spec model option at Costco. I mentioned at the start of the video there's one spec area for me that this lower spec model option actually beats the higher spec, and that's weight. Not that the higher spec model option is overly heavy, quite the opposite, as it weighs in at 1.26 kg, that's about 2.78 pound, but mainly thanks to that lack of the touch display, this lower spec model does weigh in that bit lower, at around 1.17 kg, that's about 2.58 pounds. So perhaps the best way to sum it up is that this lower spec model option is an excellent Chromebook, whereas the higher spec model option is an outstanding Chromebook. But let me know what you think of them in the comments. Beyond the points I've mentioned, all the the fundamentals in this model line match between the two models, areas like the backlit keyboard that's a pleasure to type on, coupled with the smooth glass-like touchpad. For sound it's got Dolby Atmos certified speakers, there's four of them, two up on the keyboard deck and then it's got the two subs underneath on the bottom of the Chromebook. You've also got the same outstanding battery life and great quality Quad HD webcam. The videos on screen to watch next will help give more detail on all of these features, so you can check out on the left of your screen now my unboxing and initial impressions of that higher spec model, and then my review of it is the video on the right of your screen. Cheers.